Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Android App Arena is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Android App Arena, episode 118 for Wednesday, October 5th, 2016. Screen sharing. This episode of Android App Arena is brought to you by the Ring Video Doorbell. With Ring, you can see and talk to anyone at your door from anywhere in the world using your smartphone. It's like caller ID for your home. Go to ring.com slash arena and get up to $150 off a Ring of Security kit with their limited time offer. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Android App Arena. I'm your host, Jason Howell. Uh, since we're all technology enthusiasts here, this scenario might just sound familiar to you. You have a friend or a family member who can't quite figure out how to use their phone. They get tripped up when they try to send someone a message, or maybe they don't know how to activate voice commands on their device. Maybe instead of spending hours getting nowhere with them by talking to them on the phone, you can instead try to show them what needs to be done remotely. That is one of many things that screen sharing is good for. I'm going to highlight three ways from simple to complex that will allow you to share your screen to someone else, either remotely or you know, over the internet or locally uh, to someone's desktop, maybe your own even. It's this week's Roundup. Sometimes you don't need a whole lot of bells and whistles. You just need an easy way to kick a screen share into gear. So you need simplicity, basically. This is ScreenMeet, an easy-to-use screen sharing app for those times when you want to share your screen to a number of viewers on the web, and it's dead simple. Here's the main page. I'm given my own personalized ScreenMeet URL that I can share with my potential viewers. They, on their end, can enter that URL at any time. And if I happen to not be sharing anything when they go there, they're going to get a closed sign. Now, over here on my device, I'm going to tap Start to share. And once I do, I'm notified that I'm now sharing to make sure, well, you want to know that up front. Uh, and the viewers page will instantly refresh with the shared screen active. Now on my device, I'll navigate around a little bit and you can see everything on the desktop is refreshing as I do so. This is all traveling over the internet, so frame rate is pretty slow. I'd say ScreenMeet might be perfect for demonstrating a troubleshooting scenario, but maybe not at all ideal for sharing things like video content, let's say. Uh, but there are settings that allow you to change things like uh, make faster speed refresh. That's gonna diminish sharpness, or you can ramp that up to better quality, that's going to result in a slower frame rate. So you can pick and choose which is more important. Uh, you can also set a room password for added security. Upon your first install, you are going to be granted five trial meetings to test it out. And beyond that, you're going to have to pay for a tier. For $1.99, you can purchase a full 24 hours of unlimited sessions with up to 50 viewers. Or for $15 a month, you can get on a recurring schedule offering unlimited sessions. Find Screen Meet in the Play Store now. Clockwork, also known as Coach Dutta, is known for creating inventive and thoughtful apps for Android. And he made an app for screen sharing that's called Inkwire. And it's a quick and easy way to get up and running with screen sharing. First, I'll tell Inkwire that I plan to use this device to share my screen with someone by tapping share here. Pretty easy enough. I'm then given a 12-digit access code that I can send to my contacts so that they can watch. But Inkwire does make this a little bit easier with one-tap actions for sending or copying a link that will give the recipient a nice single action to access my screen share. On the desktop, I simply tap that URL and I'm asked if I want to access the screen share, which of course I do, and bamo. There it is. Now, as I jump around on the phone UI, I notice that the frame rate and quality on the desktop is actually pretty darn solid considering what it's doing. Things feel a bit more fluid than I've seen in some other screen share solutions. There's another feature here that can be a lifesaver in some scenarios. Voice chat can be enabled in both directions. That allows the presenter and the recipient to talk to each other while the screen share takes place. 
It's great for troubleshooting remotely. Uh, to end the session, I simply go to the notification pane and then tap to stop it. And the best part in all this, it's completely free. Find Inkwire in the Play Store right now. Here is an app that acts as a toolkit for most of the things you might want to do with your phone connected to a desktop via USB. The app is called AirDroid. And to get the most out of it, you're going to need to set up a few things in advance. First, make sure your phone has developer options activated by finding the build number in settings and tapping it a bunch of consecutive times. You'll be notified when that's done successfully. And then you can go into developer settings and activate USB debugging. Now, on Chrome, you'll want to install the Air Mirror plugin. And now that we have that all out of the way, let's visit web.airdroid.com on my desktop and we'll see the interface of AirDroid, which includes shortcuts to all the important features and folders that exist on my phone that's connected into the desktop. Messages, apps, files, photos, music, ringtones, videos, call logs, contacts. I mean, I could keep listing them, but rest assured, they're all here. Tapping any one of those pulls up a window inside the site with access to the associated media for management from your desktop. You can also open the camera and have that stream in real time into the web interface, complete with controls to snap pictures and take video. But we want to do screen share in this case. So we just tap on Air Mirror and that'll kick it into gear. Because we installed that Chrome plugin earlier, we will now see a window mirroring the screen from my Android device onto the desktop because it's plugged in. Not only that, on-screen controls down at the bottom allow navigation of the phone from the desktop. You can also take a snapshot that saves locally on your computer, a screenshot of the image. And if you want a sharper image, you just go into the overflow menu and tap HD. Everything on the home screen can be interacted with using the mouse on your computer. Complete control of your device is what you have here. The frame rate is a little bit choppy, but it's pretty passable considering what you're doing. This is all available for free with monthly pay tiers that start at $1.99 per month up to $38.99 for two years solid. And those give you access to unlimited file transfer to and from your device, larger file transfer capabilities for file size, multiple connected devices, and a bunch more features. Try out AirDroid for yourself right now in the Play Store. From dead simple to feature rich, that should give you what you need to mirror that screen on other devices. Now, maybe the bigger challenge is finding a reason to. AirDroid almost acts as a docked desktop in your browser, so you could set it up and see if your life is made easier by using your phone from your desktop instead of always having to unlock your phone and use it. Uh, so check it out and see what you think. All right, before we move on, let's thank the sponsor of today's episode, and that is the Ring Video Doorbell. There's a home burglary every 13 seconds. Most burglaries happen in broad daylight. Burglars will actually ring your doorbell to make sure you're away before they break in. Well, with the Ring Video Doorbell, uh, it's been proven to stop burglaries even before they happen by allowing you to see and speak to anyone approaching your door using your smartphone. Now, Ring is using their advanced motion detection technology to protect your entire property with their Ring of Security kits. Kits include a Ring video doorbell, may include a stick-up cam, a solar panel, a chime, and a solar security sign. Pro kits include a Slim Video Doorbell Pro. This is the new doorbell, uh, Ring video doorbell, with crystal clear 1080p HD video and night vision. Really slick. It's hardwired, so it never needs to be charged. The wireless and weatherproof HD stick-up cam keeps an eye on other parts of your property and allows you to hear as well as speak to visitors with two-way talk. You can plug the chime into any standard power outlet to know when you have a visitor, even if you happen to have left your phone upstairs, let's say. The illuminated solar security sign deters intruders before they get to your door. And the Ring Video Doorbell and Stick Up Cam, I mean, it's super easy to install these things. It installs in just minutes. Working together, they provide 24-7 monitoring of your entire home, whether you're in the living room or if you happen to be thousands of miles away, you can still check in on and now you can connect your Ring Video Doorbell with your favorite smart locks and hubs for added convenience, monitoring, and security. Join the millions of homeowners who protect their home with Ring. For a limited time, Android App Arena listeners can get up to $150 off one of the Ring of Security kits. Go to ring.com slash arena. That's ring.com slash arena. And we thank them for their support. All right, up next, a fresh take 
on an old classic and it kind of makes my brain hurt, but that's why I like it. It's this week's big app. I spent countless hours playing Minesweeper on my 486 in my dorm room when I was younger. I always appreciated its simplicity and the logic required to, you know, clear the field. Uh, plus, I mean, it was part of every Windows installation, so even if you had nothing else to play, uh, you had that. Uh, there have been countless rehashes of Minesweeper since, but one takes the old and smashes it up with the new, and it's called Minesweeper Collector. And much of the gameplay here is actually left alone perfectly intact from when you might have played it back in the day. The graphics in this case are more akin to the 8-bit pixel art type of thing, so not completely updated, let's say, but updated beyond Windows. Uh, for the completely uninitiated, Minesweeper lays out a map of covered blocks that might be hiding a mine underneath. Your only clue as to whether it is or not are the bordering blocks with numbers that indicate how many adjacent blocks contain a bomb. By powers of deduction, of course, you can figure out which blocks are safe to remove without going boom. You can also drop markers on blocks so that you know to avoid them, but you only get so many of those, so you'll have to plan wisely which ones you use those on. Coins, in this case, will appear in the play field from time to time, so you can grab those when you can. Those are going to allow you to gain access to later levels. you also collect items throughout that enable you to move throughout the quest. And if you want to stick close to the original, you can do that too, complete with customization controls that include a very cool hexagonal mode for six bordering blocks instead of the usual four. It makes it really super difficult. That's going to keep you busy. You can remove the ads for $2.99, and that also brings a few new skins to the game to kind of change up the look. It's old school Minesweeper with a modern twist. Find it in the Play Store right now. Okay, real quick before I go, Twit is now on the Amazon Echo Flash briefing. If you have an Echo, you can get everyday updates on the latest tech news and events from Leo, Megan Maroney, and myself. To hear Twit's Flash briefing, just go to your settings in the Alexa app, search for Twit, and then subscribe, and that's going to get you started early in the morning every single day. Send me your favorite apps and categories to arena at twit.tv or you can post those to the subreddit. That's androidapparena.reddit.com. The show plays live every Wednesday right around 5 p.m. Pacific following tech news today at twit.tv slash live. And new episodes always appear later in the evening in the feeds and on the show page at twit.tv slash arena. All right, that's it, folks. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Jason Howell, and I'll see you next week in the arena.